All right, today we are covering the week eight NFL slate of games for fantasy football. We're going to be breaking down a lot of interesting matchups, only two weeks on by with the Chargers and the Chiefs. So we have a lot of good fantasy assets to dive into. Uh, as mentioned in the last episode, uh, we've just signed a partnership deal here at Twin Takes Football with Sleeper. So now there is no better time to hit that like button, subscribe, join us on our journey, and I'll cue the intro. Welcome back into Twin Takes Fantasy Football. Today we're looking at the week uh, eight slate of games for the NFL. And this is going to be a bounce back week for us, not only as fantasy managers as an, after an abysmal week seven last week, but also for a lot of NFL teams who are struggling with injuries and bouncing around, trying to find replacements, trying to find ways um, for their team to adapt to either season ending injuries or uh, multiple game absences from players like Mike Williams. So um, a lot of also trade speculation going around. We've seen um, earlier this week, uh, we saw James Robinson head to the Jets. So I got a ton of players, a ton of uh, trade news to monitor. So um, should be a very, very exciting two weeks up until the trade deadline uh, on the second. So without further ado, let's get into the first game that we want to cover here today. That's going to be Dolphins at the Lions. Uh, currently, Miami is favored by three points uh, with an over-under at 51.5 points. This leaves projections for Miami at 28 points and Detroit's projected at 25.5 points. Now, why is this game so interesting? Well, to me, it's just very interesting from a process standpoint. These are two um, below-average defenses across the board. Yes, I'm aware Dolphins on paper should be good, but Zayvon Holland has been playing pretty terribly this uh, uh, year, and with injuries, they do grade out to be a below-average defense. Uh, Lions are 31st against the run uh, in fantasy points, 28th against the quarterback and 18th against the wide receiver and those side of the ball the Dolphins are 17th against the run 26th against the quarterback and 24th against the wide receiver that's where Zayvon Collin comes in um, also these are two teams that maybe don't have the strongest arm at quarterback and both of these quarterbacks I draw a lot of similarities to they both have a little bit of a rockier start to their career despite both being top five picks um I mean, there's just a lot of similarities I see in Tua and what he's had to deal with and how he's had to cope compared to what Jared Goff did early in his year. I mean, we can go back specifically to a per-game basis. Uh, Tua's game earlier this year uh, against the Ravens really reminded me of Jared Goff's 52-point game against the Chiefs back when he was at the Rams. They both had insane weapons that they got to work with, obviously Tyreek and Waddle for Hill, uh, Woods and Cup for Jared Goff, and they both have these mad scientist head coaches that stemmed from the Shanahan tree uh, to kind of engineer success for them. So I just... It's funny to see these two um, quarterbacks and these two teams come up against each other um, from that process standpoint. But let's get back to the current game. And I still am drawing a lot of similarities in what the Lions are doing and what the Dolphins are trying to do. I mean, the Dolphins, um, they addressed two his weaknesses and they tried to bring in a lot of offensive skill position players to help elevate his game. They traded for Tyreek. On the other hand, um, the Lions have gone out. They've invested highly in... Uh, DeAndre Swift. They've invested highly uh, in Jamison Williams and are trying to surround um, Jerry Goff with a lot of these offensive skill position players to ease the burden on him and, again, get that offensive efficiency from a totalitarian expect instead of letting the quarterback drive uh, the success of the offense. Um, but both have proven to be successful to a degree this season. Obviously, a lot of that has been hampered by injuries, skill position players on the part of the Lions with Swift and Amon Ra, and also to his injury. I mean, who hasn't heard about the uh, concussion gate uh, down there in Miami? So we've seen this work. We saw at one point the week five Lions were the top five scoring offense um, in the league. They were putting up an insane amount of points. They were great for fantasy. Obviously, to a Tyreek and Waddle. Uh, I believe Tyreek still has the most uh, yards per reception. Sorry, most yards overall in the season, and also uh, Waddle is also a top five player in that regard as well. So again, we've seen it work. It's just there's been a lot of hampering from injuries. Um, and that said, we saw Tua come back last game. We saw him be efficient, play well. He wasn't playing great against the Steelers, but he played well enough, and he stayed in the game, didn't get injured again. Uh, so hopefully we see his usage and um, the creativity uh, and play calling kind of ramp up now that he's is going to be his second game back from that concussion break. Uh, on the other hand, I, I, I just can't quit the Lions. I saw, like, I saw with my own two eyes a team that was very good through the first few weeks of the season, and I'm really throwing out the last two games because this is games where DeAndre Swift didn't play either game, and Amon Ra played a total of about 10 minutes between both of those two games. So I think if they're all at full health, this uh, Detroit offense is something to be um, 
feared and should be an offense that puts up points. So that being said, let's go into our must-starts. Obviously, depending on health, Swift and Amon Ra are two guys. Uh, just based on the below-average defense, you have to start against the Dolphins. On the other side, Waddle, Tyreek, Raheem Mosher, now he's firmly established himself as the RB1 in that offense is a must-start. And Tua against this Lions defense has to be a guy that you're starting uh, going forward. I think he'll have an amazing game. Probably starting TJ Hawkinson. Um, again, he's been pretty iffy from a tight end perspective, especially just with uh, and with Amon Ra and Swift coming back. It's going to be a lot more, the ball's going to be spread around a lot more to those weapons, and maybe you won't see the uh, snap percentage that TJ Hawkinson has been seeing over the past few games. But if you drafted him highly, you probably don't have any better options. And TJ Hawkinson against uh, this sort of anemic pass defense for the Dolphins should be a decent start. And again, Jared Goff uh, is a perfectly capable streaming quarterback. Uh, in the desperation start, I still don't hate Jamal Williams. He still is our goal line back. Even when DeAndre Swift was healthy, uh, he took all five of the goal line snaps and DeAndre Swift had zero. So he does have that touchdown upside in case you need someone to start. And also DJ Chark uh, has proven himself to be a capable wide receiver too in that offense. Um, second game I really want to highlight will be Raiders at Saints. Uh, currently, Las Vegas is favored to win by two points with an over-under sitting at 49.5 points. That leaves us with team projections. Uh, Las Vegas projected to have 25.5 points, while New Orleans sitting a little bit lower at 23.5 points. Um, this is going to be the second highest over-under of the week, but both of these are teams with their backs against their uh, against the wall. Uh, Saints have mortgaged their future, trading away their first round pick next year to move up and get Trevor Penning and Chris Olave uh, this past year, and also just kind of go all in with Jameis Winston uh, as their quarterback. And Raiders gave a very lucrative contract extension to Derek Carr. They went out and signed uh, Devonte Smith. They also went out and signed Chandler Jones. Gave a contract extension to Max Crosby. They are also in this all in kind of mode. Um, as well. Cap implications for both teams are nightmarish to say the least next year. So this is not something that's going to be an easy rebuild or an easy teardown. If uh, they finish outside the playoffs, these are teams that need to make the playoffs. Um, and it's going to be a very long, arduous road in front of them. They cannot make the current plan in front of them work. Um, so yeah, I think that air of desperation on both sides is going to drive them a little bit more, motivate them a little bit more to really uh, stimulate them to having a little bit better performance. Um, and we have seen moments of brilliance um, from both teams as long as they are healthy. Obviously, the big question here, in my opinion, is Jameis Winston's health. Um, I, I think he offers you a little bit better edge than what Dalton can do in this offense. Uh, but I think right now, as it tracks in the latest injury report that I saw, Dalton should be the one projected to play, um, which is unfortunate, especially for wide receiving options. Um and Chris Olave, as I believe Thomas and Landry still are uh, listed as DNPs at practice. Um, but if we look at them from a defensive standpoint, these defenses have been absolutely decimated uh, in the past couple weeks, and they're right to be torn apart by the offenses. Again, we've mentioned that there's just, these offenses, despite you know having slow starts, they're dynamic in the way that they run their offense. We have the Taysom Hill experience with the Saints. We have Chris Olave, who's a dynamic rookie. We have Alvin Kamara, one of the best running backs in the league. Also have Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams on the other side. Um, and Jacobs should definitely feast on this 21st ranked run defense. Um, and Olave can absolutely torch that 25th ranked pass defense um, for uh, the Raiders. And also, I should mention here that the Raiders are ranked dead last, 32nd, I guess, uh, in fantasy points given up to the quarterback position. So unfortunately, even if Jameis does not start, I think Andy Dalton is a fine stream uh, for this week. So, uh, again, pick him up off waivers. He should be there. We saw what he could do against the Cardinals last week, and this is not any sort of a – this is not a better defense than what the Cardinals had. Um, so, again, the must-starts, kind of mentioned them already, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Chris Olave, Alvin Kamara, and then whoever starting for the QB at the Saints. At this point, I'm leaning Dalton. And, again, you have to start Taysom Hill because he has that insane uh, touchdown and versus to weapon upside. And from the probably starts, uh, Hunter Renfro um, played well. Last game, he stayed healthy. He's on track to play again. So you're probably going to start Hunter Renfro. Uh, Darren Waller, pending his health situation. Um, Michael Thomas would be in here. However, he is not. He is a DNP at practice as of today. So I think my gut would say he's not going to play. So again, another uh, arduous season of Michael Thomas missing an inordinate amount of games. In the desperation start, you obviously have Juwan Johnson at tight end um, and Matt Collins. And Matt Collins is a little bit better. If Darren Waller continues to miss time, Matt Collins, I think, should be that big body target down the field. Um and you saw what uh, the Cardinals did to the Saints defense last week. I anticipate that um, the Raiders offense should have no trouble doing the same thing to the Saints again this week. So 
Moving on to our third game that we're going to go into in depth will be Giants at the Seahawks. Seahawks are currently favored by three points. There's absolutely no respect given to these Giants. Um, over under set at 45 and a half, which means New York is projected to score 21, while Seattle is projected to score 24. Um, this is certainly not a game that I thought I would be highlighting coming into this season, uh, but this is the fickle, fickle nature of the NFL. Two teams who have vastly outperformed their preseason expectations, and these are two teams that people thought were going to be playing for new quarterbacks come uh, 20. 2023 draft season. However, the way Geno Smith and Daniel Jones are playing right now and leading these teams to above 500 records, especially with that 6-1 and record um, for the Giants, these are two quarterbacks that are playing themselves into contract extensions and playing their teams out of that quarterback draft conversation with those top three in Levis Young and uh, CJ Stroud. So, I think uh, we'll see a lot more of these two quarterbacks for years to come, for better or for worse. Um, but getting into the actual game at hand and, sorry, and stopping to talk about draft, uh, this is a game that plays right into the way that the Giants like to play. So the Seahawks are actually really, really good um, guarding against the pass. And they are led by defensive rookie of the year candidate in Tariq Woolen. But that's okay because the Giants don't have a single wide receiver over 200 yards receiving on the season despite uh, it being week seven. Um, they continue to run the ball and just move the ball efficiently on the ground. And without Jamal Adams, the Seahawks are ranked 28th against the run. Uh, so this should be a perfect game script for the dual rushing attack of Daniel Jones and uh, Saquon Barkley. Like I said, fits perfectly into the way that Brian Dayball and the Giants offense wants to run. Um... On the opposing side, the Giants' defense is a top 5, 15 defense for fantasy from uh, from the fantasy metrics, but I still don't think they've been tested that much yet. They've had a pretty easy strength of schedule so far. I mean, you can see even in Vegas, they were they were underdogs going into Jacksonville last week. They're underdogs coming into Seattle this week. Vegas doesn't have faith in them, and I don't think they've been truly tested uh, to the point where we can we can call this a very dominant defense. A lot of growing pains, uh, despite the emergence of Quinn and Williams uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, so... Even despite a projected top 15 defense in fantasy points, um, I think Geno and just the way that they're playing in this offense, the way Kenneth Walker has been running as of uh, recently, just being an absolute madman on the ground with the ball. Uh, Tyler Lockett, Marquise Brown stepping up in DK's offense. I think that the Giants offense will have no problem, or sorry, the Seahawks offense will have no problem putting up points against this team. So let's get into this must starts. Um, again, another thing, 45 over under. I expect it to be very similar, but maybe a little bit higher. I'm projecting maybe like, a 27 to 24 score or a 27 to 20, 20, that kind of thing. So I think that this will be at least a game where you can get a lot of fantasy points in a season that we even really start for fantasy points. Uh, so our must starts, obviously Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones, those guys have to be in your lineup. Daniel Jones is better than Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers fantasy right now, better than Tom Brady, better than Russell Wilson, better than Matt Stafford. Um, he's creeping his way into a top 10 quarterback for fantasy, uh, especially in this matchup. On the other side, Geno Smith, Kenneth Walker, and Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett should be all be in your lineup, regardless of who else you have on the team. Uh, and the probable starts, Wanda Robinson. I know he left with an injury um, last game, but he should be fine. Dable said he's been practicing uh, every day this week. So um, from that standpoint, Wanda Robinson will be the wide receiver one for the Giants, and I think that he is a good play going forward. And you're also going to probably start Marquise Goodwin. Um, he saw him haul in two touchdowns last week. He is the deep threat. DK Metcalf will be out for at least two weeks. Uh, if you need a spot start, Marquise Goodwin is definitely a guy you can rely on. Uh, from the desperation start, uh, Darius Slayton. Again, Kadarius Tony's out. Kenny Galladay's not coming back. Sterling Shepard's out for the season. Um, Wandale is great, but Wandale is, again, not the tallest person in the world, and they need someone to stretch the field. And I think Darius Slayton could potentially really get into um, – find himself in a bigger role. He was pretty involved last week, and I think that uh, he continues to evolve in this offense going forward. Um, I would have no uh, qualms about pairing, uh, playing Darius Slayton in maybe deeper formats. Uh, and also, from a tight end standpoint, if you just absolutely just been absolutely decimated at tight end, Will Disley uh, does have that touchdown upside. Um, and that's all you really want is a couple catches, 30 yards, and a touchdown. And Will Disley can certainly deliver that for you. So those are the three games we want to highlight. Let's now jump into our quick hits slash best of the rest section. First game is going to be Ravens at Buccaneers. Tonight's game, Thursday night primetime game. Ravens are currently sitting at one and a half point favorites. Uh, the dis Ravens disrespect is real. And obviously this is dependent on the Ravens health uh, with Andrews having not practiced for two days in a row. But I believe that Andrews and Bateman are on track to play. In my personal opinion, uh, the Ravens are still a Super Bowl contending team. The Buccaneers are absolutely a shell of them for themselves. And the Ravens will eviscerate 
the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, my confidence in the Bucks level right now is hor- uh, horrific. Uh, Brady, I've seen him dropped in a couple of my leagues. Uh, he can't be started at this point, especially not against a you know a really good Ravens defense. And I mean. You're looking at only starting crucial assets from the Bucks, which in my opinion are Mike Evans and Leonard Fournette. Chris Godwin still hasn't even earned back that confidence in my opinion. Uh, second game will be Steel- uh, Steelers at the Eagles. Philly's favored by 11 points. I can't in good conscience recommend anyone play any Steelers assets this week. Uh, the rivalry between the Eagles and the Steelers does run very deep, and I thought for just a minuscule second that this could be a trap game for the Eagles, and then I almost fell off my chair laughing. Um, yeah, don't. the Eagles will absolutely decimate uh, the Steelers. Um should be a good game for the Eagles offensively. They should be moving the ball very efficiently and just lighting up the Steelers um, left, right, and center, running it out down their throats, uh, passing to the outside. You have to start all of your Eagles assets, uh, and this is a scary proposition, including Devontae Smith, because I know between Sanders, Hertz, Goddard, uh, Brown, and Smith, one of them is not going to be very productive for fantasy, but you can't predict which one's going to be the unproductive one. So you know it's going to be a good game. You know it's going to be points scored on the Eagles side, and you just have to take that risk. Um, if you don't want to take that risk, that's fine. Find another option. But these are guys that can go off for those 20-point week winning weeks. Uh, so I would be recommending to play all of your Eagles players and take that risk. Uh, moving on, Bears at Cowboys. Dallas is favored by 9.5. Uh, Zeke is having a pretty darn good season, uh, contrary to what I thought uh, coming into the – here, they seem to have found a good rhythm uh, managing both Pollard and Zeke in the backfield. Zeke did have a hyperextended knee, but uh, and he, as of yesterday, uh, Wednesday, was not practicing, but he should be ready to play. He did come back into the game against the Lions, and he should be ready to play on Sunday uh, against the Bears. Um, again, this is going to be a dominant run game against one of the worst run defenses uh, in the league right now with the Bears that they just got rid of. Um, What's his name? Robert Quinn. So that defense should be even more susceptible to the run. Uh, so Pollard and Zeke are both startable guys. From a passing standpoint, I expect that to be a little bit softer. Um, so CD is the only startable asset I see from a pass catching standpoint, sitting Dalton Schultz, sitting Gallup, uh, just because I expect them to lean very, very heavily into the run game. Uh, get them, expect them to get up early and just try to drain out the clock the same way they did with the Lions. And hopefully Dak can get his legs involved because I don't think he's going to get it done for you fantasy-wise through the air. Um, on the other side, the Bears was fun to watch them eviscerate New England, but I think it's going to be uh, short-lived as they run into this buzzsaw of a Dallas defense. I really can't buy into the Bears yes yet, just yet. Uh, despite some really solid performances against New England, I do need to see them uh, put it together for multiple games in a row before I start believing in those Bears assets yet again. Uh, Titans at Texans. This is our weekly running back game. A wonderful weekly segment we have here where we highlight a game and we say only play their running backs. So Derrick Henry and Damian Pierce. That is it. You know the rules. Don't get cute. Don't play anyone else. That includes Brandon Cooks. Moving on. Uh, 49ers at Rams. This is an interesting in-division game. Again, two teams that have a really rich history with each other. Um, And two teams that know each other very, very well. I'm looking out for these guys. Um, I just want to see two things really in this game. We saw uh, a very rocky start for the Rams for the first six weeks. They had a bye week. They should have come back. Van Jefferson was designated to return from IR. So I really want to see how this offense opens up with Van Jefferson now being the deep threat. Hopefully he can really kind of transform uh, that offense and hopefully uh, allow some other options for Matthew Stafford and and allow that offense to actually, you know, run at full capacity. So I really want to see how Van Jefferson coming back in that offense really impacts uh, Cooper Cup, hopefully an uptick in production um, for, uh, what's his name, from the Bears. I can't remember remember think of it, but he is relevant. So maybe that's why I can't think of it, but also for Matthew Stafford, um, hopefully not being blitzed as much, keeping the defense a little bit more honest. Uh, On the other side of the ball, I really want to see how the incorporation of CMC into that offense is coming along. Um, Again, we saw he was mildly involved in the game this past week against the Chiefs. Now he's a full week uh, in that system, learning the playbook. I expect him to be more heavily involved, and I just want to see how he's utilized and how he affects the other pieces like the Debo Samuels. Um, George Kittles and Brandon Ayukes of the world, also RIP Elijah Mitchell and Jeff Wilson. Um, another game here on a quick hits, Packers at Bills. Buffalo uh, is currently favored by 11.5 points, and Rodgers may retire at halftime. This game opened up at a 10-point spread, and it has already moved 1.5 points to 11.5, which is almost unheard of in uh, Vegas odd-making history. And I would still take the Bills to cover this game. Uh, they will run all, all over this 25th-ranked run defense and absolutely decimate the uh, DBs through the airs because that's just how good Gabe Davis 
Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen are. Uh, the Green Bay running backs, who are honestly the strength of this team, will be pissing down their legs going against uh, Von Miller, Boogie Bashman, and Oliver. And I definitely don't have any confidence in a wide receiver room. Um, even in a positive matchup for the Green Bay Packers, especially after all the drops we saw from them last week against the Commanders. So now I would just imagine that running that wide receiver room against the Bills. Yeah, no thank you. Aaron Rodgers' butt should be firmly on the bench. Um, last game, Bengals at Brown. Cincinnati's currently favored by three points. This is a great division matchup in the AFC North. And despite recent trends, we've talked so much about how they've transitioned um, from a run from balanced game to a pass dominant game, how the Bengals are the highest percentage of plays run in a neutral game script uh, for pass plays, how they have shifted from 25 plus plays under center uh, in the first two games to the past two games. They had two plays under center and 12 plays under center. Everything else was out of shotgun. We've talked about how they've changed all of that. Have they gone back to the pass game, how they utilized that? Um, I think this is one game where they get away from that trend. Uh, Jamar Chase should be out with that uh, knee sprain that he suffered last week. Um, and with the Browns being 30th against the run, expect Zach Taylor to really just run this game through Joe Mixon. I don't think it's going to be necessary uh, to really involve the passing game with uh, T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. I have full confidence on the other side in the starting Mari Cooper now that Njoku is going to be out for five plus weeks with that high ankle sprain. Uh, despite Bengals being seventh as wide receivers, Amari Cooper has shown himself to still be a very competent wide receiver. He has a good connection with Jacoby Reset, and there really is no other passing option on that offense. So Amari Cooper should get a, a very, very high target share of that offense and volume turns into good fantasy points. So now let's highlight our game of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Our game of the week this week uh, is going to be Cardinals at Vikings. Minnesota is currently favored by three and a half points, uh, leading to an over/under of 49 and a half. This gives us a projected point total for Minnesota at 26 and Arizona at 22 and a half. For the first time, we are not covering the highest over/under of the week. Um, this is one team in the Vikings, excuse me, that has completely outperformed expectations, leading. Uh, and leading the NFC North uh, with a top five record in the NFL. The Cardinals have had a rocky start, but they do look really, really rejuvenated with Del- or with DeAndre Hopkins back in the fold, back from his suspension. And this is not just from his talent as a wide receiver, but he is truly a leader on this offense. When he comes into the game, he can calm down Kyler. He can calm down Cliff Kingsbury. He's the guy that the other people on the offense uh, and the entire team, for a matter of fact, look to for direction, for guidance, for stabi- uh, stabilization. Um, so his presence, not even on the field, but off the field is completely redefining what this Cardinals defense or what this Cardinals uh, team is. Uh, I am truly sad we couldn't see DeAndre Hopkins and Marquise Brown line up next to each other. I think that would have been unbelievable for fantasy. I think that, I mean, honestly, despite what we saw in the first few weeks and how bad the Cardinals were, I think both of them together would have led to one of the top five passing attacks in the NFL. So hopefully Hollywood can come back from that Liz Frank-esque injury soon and um, we can see some semblance of that. But um, Minnesota is about an average of a defense that you can put on the field. So it won't be a cakewalk for the Cardinals. But again, uh, not something that's going to be as bad as what the uh, Saints defense was last week. But again, uh, shouldn't be a buzzsaw defense. Again, a very good test, a good uh, warm-up game for DeAndre Hopkins with his being a second game back. Kind of get Kyler more in a rhythm. Kind of get Cliff more in a good play-calling rhythm. Kind of bring back uh, the running back game into the fold here. So I think they'll be have to. Uh, I think they will have to really. Um, the option to efficiently move the ball both in the air and on the ground um, and take advantage of a okay-ish defense, but on the other side, this is where I think um, a lot of points are going to come. I think they do actually outperform their over-under uh, just because this is uh, one of the worst defenses in the league in the Arizona Cardinals, uh, giving up, what is it, 27th against the quarterback in fantasy points given up, and there is nothing more than what Kirk Cousins loves as an above-average quarterback than an absolutely brutal defense. He will absolutely take advantage of the subpar defense. He's not great in good matchups, but he is absolutely spectacular in bad matchups. He knows how to take advantage of bad defenses. And with these uh, two highly uh, relevant fantasy assets in Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson, expect him to put up a lot of points. And then therefore on the other side, Cardinal, uh, Kyler and the Cardinals will have to put up a lot of points to keep up with them. Uh, that's where I'm projecting a lot of the fantasy points come from this game. And I think it should be a very good, very close, very high scoring game. So now let's get to our must starts. Obviously, we're looking at Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, Zach Ertz, uh, starting running back for the Cardinals, whether it's James Conner, if he's back, I'm start- I have full confidence starting him. If not, you know, obviously, as we saw last week with the 23.1 fantasy points against the Saints, 
Very viable fantasy starter. Uh, also, Kirk Cousins has upgraded himself into a must-start category, uh, taking on this 27th-ranked uh, fantasy defense in the Cardinals. Obviously, Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook are guys that you need to be starting there as well, without a question. Uh, in the probably-start category, we have Irv Smith. Um, he has that touchdown upside. And then Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen has been getting more and more involved as the uh, year has gone on. So absolutely okay with starting Adam Thielen here um, against a pretty abysmal passing defense with the Cardinals. And then a desperation start. I know Rod and Elmore that a lot of people down, including myself, last week. Um, but again, Without AJ Green being on the field, uh, he's I think he's a healthy scratch for the last game with Marquise Brown's injury. Greg Dorch obviously isn't taking over snaps from Rondell Moore. He's going to be the wide receiver two in that offense. Um, and I think once he gets back to that slot production, he was putting a lot in the outside, which is not great for a 5'7 wide receiver uh, operating out of the wide position. But once he's put back in the slot, I think he will have... Um, Pretty decent fantasy production. Uh, so if you do need desperation start, I would go back to the well on Rondale Moore. Uh, for my get my for my pick of this game, uh, yeah, I think Minnesota covers this game easily and wins by five points or more. So that's all the games that we have time to cover for today. Like I said, we are retiring our my guys section um, going forward, and again, we'll get into why in our parting thoughts. You know, there's only one thing that I'm not clear about. Actually, uh, there is one thing. One other thing. All right. Just want to remind you guys, signed a content partnership agreement with Sleeper. I'm so excited to be taking this content to their platform. Do be doing videos for them. I'll be doing player projections, player analysis, and a ton of other short form video content over there. Please go check me out on Sleeper. Uh, please support me over there. Get some clicks, get some views. I would really, really appreciate that. Um, I will be covering about two divisions per week and breaking down the top four to five players on each team in two separate divisions every week. So you can kind of take that as my my guys of the week and see how I'm looking. Probably a total of about 20 players, um, 20 to 40 players per week where I'll go in and break down their fantasy projections. So I will come in here uh, towards the end of these week preview videos. I will let you know which players I have gone into and done my analysis and projections for and my videos for on the Sleeper platform. We'll tell you what divisions to go check out. You can go check out those videos if you have those guys on your team um, and just treat that as my my guys section and which guys I have confidence in, which guys I don't have confidence in. So with that being said, looking forward to a very, very fun week eight and hopefully we can get back on some semblance of normalcy. Please, I say this every week, we got to bounce back from this atrocious fantasy scoring and uh, I know laws of averages dictate that it should be this week but the laws of reality are probably going to be uh, continuing to have this fantasy production go even worse and worse and worse but you know there's always hope until next week guys take care